Welcome to the Calling Uncensored, a podcast for awakening souls on the courageous path of becoming. I'm your host, spiritual teacher and messenger, Sarah Rose. I am obsessed with shining a light on the often dark and turbulent process of awakening. You are being summoned. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm your host, Sarah Rose. And before I get started and jump into an amazing interview with Morgan Field, I just want to let you know that the Evolve enrollment doors are opening in October 2019 for a very short period of time. And if you want to be notified, and get first dibs on some really exclusive VIP bonuses, then you're going to want to jump on the wait list and you can find that URL in the show notes or you can go to sarah-rose.net, hop on the wait list there. Uh, People on the wait list are going to have first dibs and then after that I'm opening it up to my social media channels. So if you have any questions and you want to know if the Evolve Spiritual Mentorship Program is for you, hit me up on Facebook at Sarah Rose International or over on Instagram at Spiritual CEO. We can hop on a quick video chat. So now I'm super excited to introduce Miss Morgan Field to the show. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm here with the amazing Morgan Field. She is a best-selling author. She is an intuitive coach. She is a TEDx speaker. She hosts retreats. And I just thought it'd be amazing to bring her on the show and just have a can of chat and see see where it goes, because I know Spirit is definitely here guiding this conversation. Um, And I just wanted to dive right in. So Um, As you know, the Awakened Fempreneur series is all about highlighting the journeys of women that are out there in the world doing amazing things, um, bringing, you know, uh, really shining a light on healing and raising consciousness of the planet and doing their part, coming full circle in their journeys. And so when I saw Morgan release her second book, Um, powerful as fuck. Her first book is Epic Sexy You. I knew I had to have her on the show as a guest and I'm so happy to have her here. So without further ado, let's welcome Morgan Field to the show. Hello. And I was just saying to you before I started recording, Miss Sarah, is uh, yeah, when I was listening to your podcast, when you sent me the invitation and uh, I heard you just be in like this powerful spiritual boss babe dropping f-bombs i was like this is my girl yes <laughs> oh, i'm so excited to just get to be in that juxtaposition of energy with you where we get to be these majestic magical divine beings and human and play with words and not take life too seriously yes i totally resonate with that as well that's perfect so I know you had some things popping up, like when I first sent you the invitation to be on the show. How, what did you, what, what's been coming up for you that you wanted to share? Let's just dive right in. Yeah, I kept hearing talk about and share a little bit about the experience of coming out of the spiritual closet. Okay, because perfect. It's something, whether you are in your closet and you haven't come out of it yet, or if you have come out of it, but you're still wondering, am I doing this right? Is this how it's supposed to be? Uh, One of my favorite memes that always come to mind when I think of the process of awakening or coming out of the spiritual closet is there's a meme where it has a picture of someone doing yoga and it's like, "Ah," you know, and they're just sitting there in this peace and serenity. And then there's a picture of someone in bed who's like rocking back and forth going, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. (laughs) that it that is it right it's I mean you you're literally going from one what I'm hearing linguistically to share right is like you're going from one dimension of experience of paradigm of possibility of humanity and then you're literally going through this portal into a whole nother experience and it really rocks and challenges it rocks your world right it challenges the foundations of the things that we learned from our families, from our education. It, it just kind of takes that illusionary rug of stability and certainty and kind of pulls it out from underneath us. And we find ourselves having to recreate our own foundation. And so for me, when I, I remember being in the corporate world and hiding all of my magical language 
right? And so I'd say, well, I have a, a strong feeling we should go this direction. And what I wasn't fully sharing is, oh, hey guys, I actually channel spirit. <laughs> and intuitively and spiritually, uh, you know, your guides or my guides or whatever, we don't think that's the direction to go. But I, I just, I knew, just like I knew as a child, that that wasn't really air quote safe. And the reason I say air quote safe is it, it would have been fine. I would not have died. Nothing bad would have happened, right? But the, it was not safe of judgment. Mm -hmm. It was not safe from being exposed to other people's fear mm -hmm. or perceptions, right? And so, um, so that's why I say coming out of the spiritual closet because there's this, you go from this space where you're operating in, or rather I went from a space, so I don't want to project that onto anyone else, right? But I went from a space where I was operating in hiding who I was, hiding my magic, hiding my truth. I actually talk about this in the book, Powerful as Fuck, it's the part that talks about go, creating your own truth vortex, right? What parts of you are you hiding from the world and more importantly, from yourself, Right. So I wasn't listening to my guidance and, or I wasn't sharing it or I, I let other people override my knowingness. Mm -hmm. And even when you have come out of your spiritual closet and even when you have awakened and you've come out into the world as a teacher, as I know, there are some of your listeners as well that are in that boat. It doesn't mean that you don't let that happen ever. Right. Like that's still something that you are, it's like this programming that you have to constantly override as far as, okay, someone else is saying something that's in juxtaposition, root, root in my truth, root in my truth, root in my truth, right? And also giving ourselves a lot of grace and space and love when we do allow others to influence us and maybe we listen to them over our own intuition right? I mean, I'm years and years into my journey. I'm doing really big things in the world and it still happens to me. So mm -hmm. if that happens, it's normal or when that happens, that's normal. Um, but I remember, and I just keep seeing this vision of two moments of coming out of the spiritual closet that I always look back and kind of giggle at. And one was when I finally decided to leave the corporate world. And I, I remember going into the office and just, it was like a new me walked into the office and I sat down and I said, Hey, you know, I've been doing some soul searching. And as I, you know, my boss's eyes got really big. Cause that was a strange word to use or strange languaging to use in a corporate setting. And I said, you know, I just really am, am feeling pulled to going down this different path. And I've just been really guided to do something new. And, um, you know, I don't think this is a good fit anymore. And I remember him saying, okay, I totally understand what position are you going to go for instead in the company? This is a company I'd been with for eight years. Mm -hmm. I was making $250,000 a year. Mm -hmm. I say that not because of any other reason than there are a lot of reasons for us to stay where we are. There are a lot of reasons for us to continue being someone we're not. There are always reasons for us to stay in that comfortable little dark closet, right? Where we're not actually being our fully expressed self. And um, it also makes sense why he was so confused by our conversation when I said, oh, I'm not going for another position in the company. Because his assumption was, I was leaving one piece of certainty for another and I stayed within the company. And then I was like, oh, I'm actually not gonna take another position in the company. And then his next question was, oh, what company are you gonna go work for? right? Just because he was in that paradigm, which there's nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't the truth that I had decided to live in anymore. And then he said, you know, so he asked which company I was going to work for. And I was like, oh, I'm not leaving. Like, I love this company. And if I was going to work for a company, it would be this one. I have decided to go out and follow my soul and my heart and go do life coaching. It's actually what I'm pulled to. I see myself writing books and doing speaking. And I talked about all of the things that I'm doing now, mm -hmm. but you know, he couldn't see that at the time. And also this was a man who had two children and his wife stayed at home and he was the provider. Mm -hmm. Right. And so just feeling, I actually, it was an interesting thing that happened because I could feel him I could feel that there was a little bit of curiosity 
of what that might be like to, to take a leap like that. And he, he looked at me and he goes, wow, that's really ballsy. You know, and I was like, yeah. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do it. And, and, you know, and then you could tell he was like, well, you could always, your backup plan, you could always come back or your backup plan is, you know, and I was like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going that direction. Right. I'm, I'm taking the leap. I'm going to go. So I was like one of the first quantum leaps that really helped me create an awakening into my own fullest expression of truth vortex. And, um, and then the other one was when I told my parents, right? So I didn't realize how much I was hiding who I was from my family. Mm. And I had gone on this expansive awakening retreat in Sedona, Arizona. Mm-hmm. And for anyone who's ever been to Sedona, Sedona calls to you when it's time and you don't come back the same person. And, and, or if you go on any sort of spiritual expansion retreat where you're gone for several days, then you go back into your old normal. Um, it's just, it's like this expansiveness and then trying to, con- you know, contract yourself into this tiny little box to fit into it. And I decided I wasn't going to put myself back into the box that I had been living in. And I took my parents out to dinner and I just started sharing my truths with them. And it was incredibly liberating because I feel like, and so for the those of your listeners who are already doing the teaching, Mm-hmm. when I came out to my family, I feel like that was the catalyst that helped me come out more to the world. I was already out in the world doing my work, but I was still hiding. I was still not giving myself permission to go for it fully because I was afraid of what my parents may say I was afraid I was going to embarrass them. I was afraid that I was going to, that they were going to judge me or whatever. And none of that happened. Mm -hmm. They actually were, uh, I could tell in some, in some parts it may be kind of weird or whatever, but I, I actually, they started mirroring back to me like, oh, when you were a kid, even like at four or five years old, you knew things that we couldn't understand how you would have known them. Mm -hmm. Or if you were listening to us have a problem you would just be like, oh, well, why don't you do this, 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 and this? And then you'd walk away and we'd be like, that was a great idea, right? And so, and then I started connecting dots for them. Like, oh, do you guys remember when I used to talk about the people in the basement? Which of course there were no people in the basement, they were spirits, Mm -hmm. right? And so just like all of these little things started to then click and make sense for myself and for them. And when I came out of that spiritual closet with going from a corporate position into creating my own position and lane in life and also coming out inside my family i i gave it gave me more and more permission to just be who i was in the world of being a healer being a teacher being an intuitive being someone who can openly go somewhere and say oh yeah i channel spirit guides or mm-hmm. talk about them on on tv and podcasts and radio and Right. So it feels like for anyone who might still be hiding a little bit, one of the areas that will give you even more permission to breathe without even realizing you need to breathe deeper there is coming out to your family. Yeah. What would you recommend for people that don't necessarily have a family that would be supportive? Do you, do you recommend if you have a dream sharing it with everybody or do if you, if you have this dream or ambition, only sharing it with people that you know would have your back and lift you up and support you. Cause I know a lot of people you run into naysayers and something's so new and you're starting to birth something in the world. And like, it's such a fragile place to be. You bring it up to the wrong person. It can really shoot you down in some way sometimes if you know what I mean. So there's like two different schools of thought that I subscribe to. One is being vulnerable and authentic no matter what. And the other one is not necessarily, I don't know, sharing something with people that you already know are just not going to get it. Yeah. So I think those are two separate pieces and they can actually exist together. So, mm-hmm. uh, so, cause I agree with both of those. So in one regard, what I channel a lot from guides is, and I actually just channeled this today, uh, yesterday. So this is why this is so interesting and on time, of course, one of the guides said, show, don't tell, to the people who are 
not possibilitarians, right? So like talk to your possibilitarians, the people who want to dance in possibility with you, the people that will support you, tell them your dreams because mm -hmm. they can expand your expanders. Spirit mm -hmm. calls them expanders. Um, show the naysayers or the ones who maybe are the Debbie Downers and they're, they, you know, they find a, a problem with every solution, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that. And the reason I recommend coming out to your family isn't for them. And it isn't actually even for being vulnerable. It's to give yourself the permission to come out to the world. Because if you're hiding from your family, Mm -hmm. then you're let then you're every day without consciously realizing it you're choosing fear over hugeness right so like if you're in a space so let me also say this if you are in a space where you're still in your cocoon of creation mm -hmm. like maybe you only have 10 clients and you're not ready to take the stages yet and you're not ready to build you know um content online and you're not really really ready to to build and scale then if you want to stay in your cocoon there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. right but right. at a certain point in your path of expansion if you want to write books that you want to touch the world if you mm -hmm. want to like i've seen visions that the imprint that i leave on the world is so profound it would have been impossible for my family not to find out who i was <laughs> and we still do that work right yeah. so it totally does depend on where you are in your path. It's just, I didn't consciously take that journey. I didn't say, oh, I'm gonna come out to my family so I can do my work more profoundly. It was, I came out to my family because I was so sick of choosing fear over hugeness. Right. I wanted to be seen. And like, if I couldn't be seen by my own parents, then I wasn't, able like I, then I couldn't be seen by the world and I realized that I was robbing my parents of the opportunity to actually get to know who I was and right. I was robbing my friends or my brother or whatever of the opportunity to actually get to know who I am mm -hmm. as a person mm -hmm. um which if that's what I was doing to them I'm doing that to myself so this actually has very little to do with other people and has so much more to do with giving ourselves a reference point that we can be ourselves even if someone, even if our own mother, if my mom had said to me, well, you're out of the family. I mean, she would never have said that. But if, if my mom or dad had said, well, you're out, you're, you're out of the family. Okay, well, at least I know, and I'm not making up stories and wasting mm -hmm. all that energy on stories. Mm -hmm. So when you were, when you made the conscious decision to have that discussion with your corporate boss was there a sense of fear of course Sorry. yeah so i love that because i i see i speak a lot of the, to this effect with my clients of the importance of taking taking sacred action which is stepping into full faith in the face of fear so you know that saying like follow your bliss there's really like the, a wall of fear around your bliss that you are required to i say it's like the cover charge to your dreams is to really step up and step into full faith. And when you said take the leap, I think that there's almost like an initiation process that us spiritual messengers and teachers go through where you do have to fall back and rely on faith at some point and trust in not only yourself, but the process, the purpose, the support that you have from the other side and know that you are here to do something big. And like at some point you will be challenged to step up with faith over fear. And once you do, it's like an instant energetic up leveling like you can sense it it's like palpable like there's this new energy this new vibration that sort of floods in that you get to now you know divert towards what it is you're doing and it's like an instant momentum at least that's been in my experience what did you experience when you did take the leap oh yeah I, everything changes Be, so, so that's why i'm saying you know it's people ask a lot uh, for me, I, I appear fearless, right? And I get this a lot where someone's like, oh, well, what would you know? I've had my own best friend say this to me sometimes where she's like, yeah, but like, what would you know about having fear in business? And I'm like, I'm human. What? <laughs> like, yes, I'm this awakened being that dances in different dimensions and I'm human, right? So that's something that happens a lot too, is I see people that even as they do expand to high points, then it's like they're experiencing fear, which is normal, and they're judging themselves for experiencing the fear. So one, fear will always be present, and two, it's what is your relationship with it? So I actually have an agreement with fear 
-hmm. that if something scares me, Mm -hmm. I say yes to it. Yes. That's amazing. I love it. And so every time, and I actually wrote a section about the, the fear alchemy, right? Like the energy of fear and how you can actually use it to serve you. I wrote about that in powerful as fuck because yes, when you look fear right in fear is kind of like a bully. It's going to pick on you and pick on you and pick on you and pick on you. The minute you turn around and say, that is enough. We're done here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be courageous. Fear is like, okay. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God. So the point of fear around, around the bliss, right? It melts. Mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't mean it goes away, but the power is not this impermeable thing, right? It becomes this energy that just kind of dances in your vortex and it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until that particular layer of fear is gone. Mm-hmm. And then you've transcended that particular layer of fear, and then you're just up leveling your fear every time, right? Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, every time I create something new and I send it out into the world, I'm afraid. And I do it, and then it's like a portal of expansion. Portal, um, yeah, that's totally that's that's how I experience it. It literally is. It's it's amazing, and yeah, it's such an amazing process when you're able to just. I don't know how else to explain it except this like port it's it's like um it's like a cover charge to everything that you want like you have to be willing to step into that and get to that point where you realize like in a moment of decision like you talk about a transformation how long does a transformation take how long does a breakthrough take or whatever it's like you know does it does a transformation take it take a like that when you just decide or does it does does everything shift over time with tiny decisions in the moment that you make over and over again What's your sort of take on that? Well, so it's, it's, it's both in some ways, right? Because mm-hmm. the, I kind of feel like fear is like double Dutch. This is my experience of fear, right? Where, and I never learned double Dutch, but this is just always the vision spirit shows me where you're like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in. Okay, not yet. No, I'm going to go in, I, you know? And so the amount of times that you think about going in, they are helpful. They are in service. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to, no, I'm going to, you know, I'm the back and forth and the cha-cha dance. I mean, that is a beautiful part of the process of alchemizing or transmuting fear into catalyst of forward movement. At the same time, the equation is not complete without the decision fully. And it's funny because I channel this a lot where it's like, we think we've made decisions myself included, right? Like, I think I've made a decision and I'm sitting there doing the cha-cha or the, you know, the going, I'm going to go forward. No, I'm going backwards. I'm, you know, and like, think I'm going to go. No, I'm not. Maybe, you know, j- tomorrow, tomorrow sounds like a good day. And I, then I consciously go like, oh my gosh, I haven't actually made the decision. I think I did. And I'm lying to myself and I convinced myself I made the decision and the commitment. But if I did, I would have already done it. Mm-hmm. And so the true soul juice is in the decision. It is in the commitment and the aligned action mm-hmm. with that, right? Yeah. So like yeah. I didn't actually make the decision to mm-hmm. leave the job until the night before I walked into that office. And I had thought I had made that decision many times mm-hmm. before. And the reason I say it's both is because every time you make a decision, and right, it's like, it's, tr- it's taking that level and layer and vibration of fear mm-hmm. and transcending it to the next time it's, you're always going to experience fear. It's just different each time. Um, I remember prepping for the TEDx talk and having so much fear come up that one of my friends said, have you done speaking before? Cause you kind of are acting like you have not. And I'm like, I have done, I forgot that I had, you know, like I totally had this awesomeness amnesia and completely forgot all of my public speaking experience because fear will lie to you. Fear will create such a false experience of reality. And so what I, I remember what I did in that moment intuitively, what I was guided to do. And now I hear guides guide others to do this is creating a badassery list, like creating a list of all of the times where you did make the decision Mm -hmm. to choose your dream over fear, to choose courage over fear. And 
look at what magic it brought you because it's pretty instantaneously it brings you magic yeah it is it's amazing it's pretty it's it's activating that magician archetype in us and we talk a lot we hear a lot about the divine feminine rising and i hear a lot of subscribers to the podcast and and the the, the youtube channel and things like that you know they you know, I speak a lot about how affirmations and things like that aren't necessarily going to get you to that next level. Like there is this divine masculine energy as well that sort of people don't talk about as much, which is the inspired action. Like you get the downloads, you get the, you get the inspiration, you get the moment of like, I got to do this. And then it comes to that place of where it does require courageous action. And then you shrink and which is fine because like you said, you're experiencing it and you're experiencing, you know, over and over again. And each time it's a different experience, but that divine masculine energy, bringing that into the equation and taking the sacred action. I call it sacred action where you step through fear with courage that instantly up levels you. It's an, it's an imperative part of this formula that is required in order for you to get to that other side. Oh yeah. So I refer to it as 3D, 5D, although there's like many other dimensions, it's just, it helps us wrap our head around it. Um, so pre-awakening, you're just pretty much in a lot of 3D right? Which is just the physical world, leaving the reality as it is very like tangible, right? Mm -hmm. um, 5D is, uh, and so in that way, so also masculine in the way of the way I see people run their business where it's like action, 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 hustle, 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 which is very 3D. Yeah. 5D is where there's a lot of the sacred feminine energy. It's a lot of, it, it's the love and all the other dimensions. It's the magic, it's the alchemy, it's the joy. It's, it's, it's like this whole array of, you know, people are always saying to me, Morgan, life is not all rainbows and sunshine and unicorns. Um, and it's true. And at the same time, they know I love that. So that's why they say that. Um, and so what I'd actually, the third book I'm writing about, and I'm hosting a, a group this evening, um, every Tuesday we get together and we write our books together is the, it's, it's a book for entrepreneurs that are healers and intuitives and light workers who are doing their work in the world. And they're the reason that they're not getting the abundance that they're craving, or they're not expanding in the way that they want is because they haven't integrated the masculine feminine or the 3d 5d. Mm -hmm. right call it whatever you want but they either learned so heavy in the sales and this is the masculine way to do it and da 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 and you do step one step two step three and follow up about you know you either learned this way or learned someone else's way or you're just killing yourself on action or you're coming over here and you're sitting and you're journaling and you're manifesting and you're dreaming and you're visioning and right it's like the togetherness, the intersection of those two, the partnership, the balance is actually where your abundance portal is. And so it's learning how to find the magic in the inspired action. It's, it's yes, right? Like it is taking responsibility, which is also the masculine, like taking responsibility and owning mm -hmm. the actions that you're doing that are aligned and or not aligned mm -hmm. with where you're going. I mean, the whole book, Powerful as Fuck, is about that alignment of responsibility. What do you want and are you in alignment with it? And this new one, and I have no idea what it's going to be called yet because it's going to name itself, but it is all about how do you give yourself permission to not be so rigid one way or the other, masculine, feminine, 3D, 5D, spiritual, human, right? And allow yourself to find the joy and the magic in both. Mm -hmm. and be evenly expressed in the being and the doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like that is where so much magic is, but it's, it's rare that I see people and it's rare that I see leaders being that and doing that. Yeah, I think a lot of the, my listeners will, will um, resonate with that. A lot of them are stuck in the hustle, stuck in burnout, stuck in overwhelm and you know, taking action for the sake of taking action. That's what's been ingrained in us. That's like, you know, a very masculine dominant society instead of that aligned action. So I always say that there's a difference between being on fire and burned out, right? There's <laughs> one's in alignment and one is not. So um, it's about balancing those energies. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And see, and then I have experienced a lot of clients where they're on the other side, right? Where it's like, I, I, my cosmic orbit pulls in a lot of people who are these like epic imprinters, divine um, healers and, and, you know, they also channel and they have all these beautiful soul gifts, but then they're like sitting there in the 
law of attraction and manifestation energies mm -hmm. and then frustrated that it's not coming and it's like well you're not taking action or when they are taking action they're lying to themselves without realizing it they're in denial that to your point it's the on fire action not the no, it's the burned out action, not the on fire, right? Like, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it is so important. Even just I, some, one of the things that I, I saw, I was at a workshop this weekend and was just talking to the, one of the leaders about this is even making sure that you're taking responsibility for what it takes to, to build a business and the foundational pieces. Like I see a lot of spiritual light workers that aren't doing their taxes or they're not taking care of the you know 3d business aspects or not building contracts and not doing the legal side um and not understanding the magic in that right and so it's it's not about one or the other it's not about good or bad it's about bridging the gap and making sure that you're covering all of your bases so that you it's like i just see this grid it's like this energy grid it's like this lit up energy grid you know and some people are lighting up one side like a christmas tree but the other side's out or vice versa or they light both up but not at the same time right yeah you have to expand the container of your ability to hold more um you know what i mean so more can flow to you and you're able to receive that and sustain it and you know showing the showing the universe your guides your angels or whatever you refer to that it's something that can be sustained and, and, and you can hold that space and hold that energy for all of the big dreams and everything that goes along with that, whether that be employees or dealing with, you know, outsourcing properly, like being able to expand and grow, like you said, mixing the 3D with the 5D and being able to expand and being able to hold and have a strong foundation for that. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so you want to tell everybody about your, so your first book is more about pre-awakening or the process of the awake, like coming out of the spiritual closet. Yeah. The first book, you know, where epic. I started, go ahead. Oh, Epic Sexy You. The first yeah. Book. So Epic Sexy You was a book that brings you through the journey where I'm really heavily stuck in 3d at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's not a sequential storybook, right? But I do share, I'm very, very generous with my shadows and my darkness. And if you can't laugh, you know, at yourself, laugh at me. And um, <laughs> it, it is a very beautiful book. It is a very beautiful book. It's a, it's a tool uh, to help you come back to yourself even when you're awakened, right? So I channel write everything. So I go back and I listen to the audiobook. Spirit will be like, mm, you're going to need to listen to um, the one that they recommend for almost everyone. And for myself, they bring me back to over and over again, I think is track 11 on the audiobook. And in the book, it's the heart, headspace, heart space, right? So like headspace is very much 3D. Heart space is what's going to get you into awakening into other dimensions and layers of awakening. But yeah, I mean, I started at I was a heavy, heavy drinker, like had very addictive tendencies towards drinking and smoking and toxic relationships and, um, and workaholic, right? Just like channeling all of my power and magic into mm -hmm. addictive energies of those selections, right? A, a lot of numbing going on. Um, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't even know like it was hard for me to make decisions. I didn't know when someone would be like, oh, what do you want to do? It's like, oh, I don't care, whatever you want to do, right? I didn't know what lit me up because I never stopped to ask myself to light me up. And I talk about this in the TEDx talk and um, it's actually what spawned Epic Sexy You was, I remember someone asking me, hey, do you know that you're lovable? Like, do you think you're lovable? And I was like, like I could not get the word yes to come out of my mouth. And that was like, that was a point of awakening for me. And so Epic Sexy You is just sharing all of the tools that I learned across many years that it took me to awaken, mm -hmm. right? And I, and I just remember looking for a book like this when I was in the pro, like when I woke up to knowing, man, I want more. I want to be able to say yes to a question like, do you think you're lovable? I want to be able to say no to people so I can say yes to me. I want, at the time, I didn't even know those were the things I wanted, right? But the book really helps really just bring you back to who you are. What do you actually want? Why are you actually here, right? And that is part of the awakening is just knowing 
who were you before society told you who to be and your family told you to who to be and all of that, right? Let's come back to that. And even as I'm awakened, I still come back to it because society is always going to tell you who you should be. Mm -hmm. The higher you go, the more people that want to tell you who you should be, right? You get into a relationship. They oftentimes subconsciously ooze out onto you who they want you to be, who their ideal of perfection is. Um, your family still sometimes puts you in the box of who you, who they want you to be just from a subconscious energetic perspective. So, so yeah, so that book's for that. And then the second book, Powerful as Fuck, is it is for self-mastery. Mm -hmm. It is really about, hey, you think you're, you think you're woke. Nope. Like there's a whole <laughs> nother layer. <laughs> Kicked my ass. I mean, it is an ass kicking book. It yeah. is uh, one of my childhood friends did a testimonial for the book and um, she, she's also an epic imprinter. It's interesting to see who we choose as friends, as children. Um, we know we were friends and then we came apart and then we came back together uh, as we got older. But she said, this book is like getting hit by a two by four of awakening, right? I mean, it's, it, it is for the people who are, who are ready to go deeper. It's like, we know, we will always go deeper. It's a, a rabbit hole of infinite expansion and awakening. And it's knowing every single time you get to that point where you're like, man, I know I could be more, I could be doing more and be more for myself and actualizing what I actually want or man, I got what I wanted. Now what, you know, mm -hmm. that's, really what happened to me. It's like, I, I, I achieved all of these things. I did all these things. I made, I actualized all these dreams. And then I was kind of in this warm and fuzzy comfort zone and I wasn't expanding. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I started channeling that book and it was just like, listen, <laughs> let, let's have a real conversation about some areas where you're getting in your own way or where you might be choosing comfort instead of expansion and how that's getting in your way and all of that. But yeah, that book is a, total tough love kicking the ass you could tell even in the languaging of the books the way that they were channeled mm -hmm. um it's a maturity of vibration of what information comes through uh so it's very epic sexy you is very gentle so as you're awakening you need that it's like this really yummy cocoon it's very loving and kind and gentle and it's okay if you fall get back up and powerful as fuck is like let's go. We don't have time for this. you got big things to do in this world. You are a dream chaser. You are powerful. Get out of your own way. Yeah, let's get to this. So yeah, you're totally speaking to my audience right now. I love it. I knew there was a reason we had to have you on the show. <laughs> That's so amazing. So why don't we, why don't you share a little bit where people can find you online? Yes. So my, where would be the best place? Um, I, pretty much post everything on my own page on Facebook is like, I, that's where I actually really love connecting. Um, that's my, you know, it's not the place that you, you should usually send people and I'll send you other places too. But like, I just sit in there. I'm like, what do I feel? That's a place that I just love expressing. So that would just be finding me at Morgan field on Facebook. So M O R G A N and then F I E L D. I think I gave you the link. So that should be in the um, mm -hmm. notes. And then my website is Epic sexyu.com so yeah and then instagram is at epic sexy you yes i will share all of those links in the show notes for anybody that wants to you know check you out online or in your amazon book links as well will be in the show notes so for both of those books if that's resonating with you uh do check out the show notes so you can check out morgan's book um is there any closing statements or anything you wanted to share with the audience uh, well, so also I'm hearing to share the email in case anyone wants to ask uh, any questions via email. It's epicsexyu at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, wisdom, let's just, let me channel, two, I can feel there's like two points of channeling. So if you're in your awakening, mm -hmm. um, actually just really hearing, giving yourself as much permission as you can to be gentle with yourself, to... Mm -hmm create a lot of self-love, a lot of self-care. Um, I'm seeing visions of like journaling and, or like making sure you take your journey within, like constantly going within. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did, one of the things I did in my awakening journey that was actually really helpful is I 
sat my parents down and said, I need you guys, like, for a temporary space and place and time, I'm going to ask that you don't share your opinions with me because I'm trying to find my own voice. Mm -hmm. right or I may sometimes say that to friends like hey I'm you know I'll call them cocoons like I'm in a cocoon I need to take my journey inward I still do this Mm -hmm. and so I haven't actually decided what I want on this particular thing yet or on this direction or in this relationship or whatever so I'm I'm gonna ask that you don't give me I call them USOs unsolicited opinions Mm -hmm. unless I ask you um only because I, I I'm having a hard time figuring out what's my voice Mm -hmm. Right. So that's one of the things I see as people are awakening is they wake up and then they're like, okay, I can hear my voice, but now what's my voice and what's someone else's or what's mine and what's intuition. So just giving yourself some boundaries, boundaries are really helpful when awakening. And then if you're already in a space where you're out in the world and you're healing and you're imprinting your light, I would just say, just know that fear is not a sign of being a fraud. It is a sign of being a badass, expansive woman or man. If you've got men uh, listening to you, I tend to work with women, but um, right. It's like, you are this majestic, divine, constantly expanding being and follow the fear. The fear is exactly where your expansion points are and really renegotiate and reevaluate with yourself what your relationship with fear is going to be. And you have to decide ahead of experiencing fear, what your agreement with yourself is going to be. You cannot wait until you're in the fear and then say, in this moment, I'm going to choose to keep going, right? You have to make the decision ahead of time. So that's why I said earlier, like my agreement is if something scares me, I say, yes, Mm -hmm. it is my agreement with myself. If I don't say yes, so anyone who maybe is like, man, I just passed up an opportunity because I was afraid, go back, right? Go back to that opportunity and see if that door is still open. It's okay to miss opportunities and go back to them. And I think that's one of the things I see with people is they're not saying yes to something because they're afraid and then they're like extra afraid to go back and, and take the opportunity. So just Remember, no matter how magical and spiritual and awakened you are, you're also very beautifully human. And one of the things I see with a lot of light workers is judging their humanity or judging others' humanity as they awaken. And so I would recommend looking for the beauty and the joy and the magic in being human, in being in this 3D realm, in being on this planet because what you find is whatever you're looking for. And so I just notice sometimes people, it's like a spiritual ego, right? It's like you expand, I've experienced it too. You expand and then mm-hmm. you're judging your own humanness, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're judging your humanness or anyone else's humanness, you're just going to have a harder time being able to leave the imprint you came here for. Cause you have to love being human mm-hmm. in order and like genuinely find those intersections of humanness and spiritualness in order to be able to be the most powerful version of you that you can be. Yeah, I love that. And um, when you speak about, um, I just did an episode on this, like once I, I see a lot when women, including myself, get on this, we're on this conscious spiritual path. So you're, you're already self-reflecting a lot. And sometimes it's, it's a blurry line. Like, are you following, are you doing something, you know, taking action through fear or are you, um, not following your intuition, right? Because again, there's like such a contradictory with spirituality. It's like, oh, follow, you know, your feeling is what manifests and follow your feeling. At the same time, something seems you're, you're experiencing fear. So I have a lot of people that are like, is this, am I sabotaging myself? Is this ego or am I, am I upholding my boundary system or am I, you know what I mean? They start to judge if they're up leveling or if they're, if they're not having healthy boundaries or if they're stepping towards fear, making a sacred courageous action, or if they're um, actually it's, it's off, it's not in alignment, you know? So it's like this back and forth kind of thing. It's really, they get into the mental space a lot and then they're, they're using judgment and assert, they're using ego to sort of like their mental space to sort of like logically rationalize things and figure it out. Yeah, I'm also seeing um, what came up when you said that is, and I've 
caught myself doing this and I giggle, right? Humor is the best anecdote to shame, um, is when I find myself in those moments where I am thinking I'm empowered. I am empowered, you know? I'm not gonna do that because I'm, I'm empowered or I'm not gonna, you know, even have that conversation with this person because I, I'm just, I mean, I'm so empowered in this moment. I don't know why I just keep hearing empowered, right? But it's really just like my inner, I call her spicy, like my inner spicy avatar who learned as a small child that I can mask things as empowerment, but really I'm just running from something or I'm afraid of something or I'm angry about something, right? And so it's, it's also, it's, it's really, to your point, it's getting clear on what is actually, because if I'm angry and avoiding something, that's fear, right? So like, what is actually fear and what is actually intuition? Mm -hmm. And um, what are the things that maybe you're avoiding doing? And I'm getting a lot of downloads about this recently. What mm -hmm. are the things that you're avoiding doing in your business? And you're saying to your point, well, I don't feel like it, or, you know, I'm not pulled there right now. And it's like tough shit, you know, like there are some things in your business you have to do. And that's what I saw, you know, in 3d or in the corporate world, there's structure, structure, structure. Mm -hmm. Right. I've been writing about this for this next book. It's like all this structure. And then you leave that and then you go to the other end of the pendulum and you're like, no, I'm going to have complete freedom because screw structure. And, you know, <laughs> and it's like, well, but structure can serve you, you know? And so discipline is something as entrepreneurs, we have to learn, you know, and as spiritual entrepreneurs, it's how do we have a balanced discipline that allows us to have enough of a push that it's like, okay, who cares that you don't feel like doing your taxes? You got to do your taxes. Like, no, I just, I'm not really, I'm not really feeling it, you know, or I, I don't really feel like, um, taking this client today or, you know, and it's just like, no, you find ways to feel like it. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have, you, or delegate it or something. Right. But like be responsible and, mm -hmm. and create structure and discipline that actually serves you. But that's something I see a lot where people are not, they're like completely avoiding any structure of 3D or any responsibility of doing things that really do matter in your business. Mm -hmm. um, and then lying to themselves and saying, yeah, but I'm just like not guided to that or I'm not, I'm not really feeling that. And it's like, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not feeling like going live today. I'm not feeling like showing up today. I'm not feeling like it. And I can only do it when I feel like I'm in complete alignment and things like that, which on one side, again, it's contradictory. It's true. You want to be working from an inspired place on this, on the other side, it's like, what did you commit to? So it's really uncovering, like, is the action that you're taking in alignment with your goal or is it not? It's like, I use this example in a podcast. Like if I want to go to the, if I want to get healthy, like is going to the gym, something I should, if I only went to the gym when I felt like it, I wouldn't be in a healthy, you know, there's many times I have to go to the gym, even though I don't feel like it because I'm committed to the outcome yeah. and taking that, taking that action along the way. Yes, and we have to learn how to be factories and manufacturers of inspiration. Mm -hmm. If you cannot inspire yourself, how are you going to inspire others? And so it is important for us to take responsibility to be our own source of inspiration. We have to learn to mm -hmm. create inspiration in the moments we're not inspired. Yeah, yeah. Has to come from within, a place from within. So some you know do you you know sometimes it's it's sort of like and i feel it's spiritual messengers or just anybody it's like you can be led by the carrot or the stick kind of thing too so it's like i love this quote um i don't know where i heard it um pain pushes and vision pulls mm. when you can when you can you don't necessarily always have to wait for things to you know shrink in on you before you take that action because I see that that happens a lot as well, especially when you're here and you have like this big mission and you have like this calling. And if you want to play small, like, okay. But like you said, the universe will find a way to hit you over the head with like a two by four, instead of just a little nudge on the shoulder, eventually. <laughs> That's like, so which do you want? Do you want to, do you want to learn specifically through pain and getting so uncomfortable that you, that's the only thing that makes you change or take that next step? Or do you want to really step into your power, get ahead of the game a little bit and have a relationship with fear so you can see it head on for what it is instead of allowing it to sort of encroach in your in your energetic space before you finally decide to take the actions yeah that's why honesty and self-reflection are such an important part of the business and it's 
Um, you know, one of the things I've been realizing as I've expanded and expanded and expanded is I started to watch other people's perceptions of what work meant and how different my perceptions of work were. And um, I didn't realize it, but I started to allow other people's fear and judgments of and perceptions of work to encroach on my own perception. And my perception and what I've been guided and what I hear is self-reflection is part of your job as a solopreneur, right? A, an entrepreneur who, who runs their business through their heart and soul. Um, reading or let me take that back. They said reading for me because I'm a writer and I'm a reader. Um, anything that lights you up that is part of your job. And so what I see is some people aren't giving themselves permission to play until they're done with their air quotes job or their work or, you know, and it's like play is a portal to possibility and expansion. And, um, and so it's knowing or anything, right. It's like, it's knowing that we get to control how we use our time. And so it is, it's funny. I can even hear, it's like all these things is they sound contradictory, but they get to all coexist. You get to learn to be responsible for your time and do the things that you maybe don't really want to do by finding ways to create inspired energy that can translate into action. Right. And yes, you do sometimes have to push yourself and yes, you do sometimes experience pain. Right. And also you get to find things that pull you forward. You get to be the manufacturer of the vision it is your responsibility to sit with that right but it's just interesting for whatever reason lately i keep hearing and seeing spirit say that the world doesn't like when someone sees me post a picture of me by the pool doing nothing or what would appear to be nothing which i mean sometimes i am doing nothing right but that nothing is something like that is part of my job mm -hmm. to do the things that recharge me Mm -hmm. so that I have the energy and the inspiration to do the other pieces. So I don't know who needs to hear that, but I keep hearing that's important for your audience to know that pay attention to the way that maybe other people are perceiving what work means, or even the way that you might be perceiving what work means mm -hmm. and know that it is actually a part of your job responsibility. If you were to create a job responsibility for your particular position, that what lights you up, right? What lights Sarah up? What lights Morgan up? That is, Mm -hmm. actually the very thing that is part of your responsibility as a solopreneur to do mm -hmm. not once all the to-dos are done right yeah. but as part of your like you can have a to-do list but do you also have a magical to-do list do you have an insp insp inspirational to-do list like it's really making sure that you're giving yourself permission to put on there not just tasks and responsibilities that are would be what the 3D world, right? It's like, what's your 3D list and what's your 5D list? And again, making sure that you're, you're doing both things. Yeah. I love that. That's so important. Thank you so much for sharing. I had so much fun having you on the show. Oh my God. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. You are just like an absolute bright light of a soul. And I'm super excited to connect with you and see how our worlds continue to, to collide. Oh, thank you. Oh, before we go, what's the name of your TEDx talk? Just so everybody can hear it. Power is an inside job. Power is an inside job. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Morgan. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on as a guest today. Thank you so much. Have an awesome one. Bye, girl. Bye. Bye. If you got value from this episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'd love it if you leave me a review on iTunes. For more info beyond this podcast, or if you have a question you'd like answered in an upcoming episode, please visit thecallinguncensored.com. And for daily inspiration or to shoot me a DM, come hang with me on Instagram at spiritualceo. Namaste.